I will now present the last classification method in this module, the k nearest neighbors. And I'll be using the same data set as before, so the bone mineral density data set, where the objective is to uh, predict fracture based on other covariates. So again, here we want to estimate the probability of each category of the outcome. But the main idea of the k and n, k nearest, na nearest neighbor, is rather simple. We're going to classify each element according to the categories of its neighbors. So suppose that we have uh, two predictors, var1 and var2, and want, we want to classify the blue and the red category and have this here, some of the data that was observed. So if I have a new uh, observation and I want to classify this new dot, I would use uh, uh, some of uh, its neighbors, let's say three of its neighbors, and I would classify it according to the majority of the category uh, among the, those neighbors. So in this case, this, this new observation would be classified as a red dot. For example, another observation here would be classified as a blue dot because it's the majority of the neighbors are uh, also blue. So I could do this basically for the entire space um, of var1 and var2, and I would have a classification uh, region uh, like this one with the border here defined. If I had chosen a different number of uh, neighbors, let's say k equals to 7, I would have uh, a different boundary, a different classification area, and the higher I go in terms of number of neighbors, this, this boundary, this area tend to be a little bit more uh, smooth, uh, where with, for example, uh, the more extreme um, classification with k equals 1, so each uh, dot being classified as the closest neighbor, I have a quite complex um, boundary. So if um, we use now the the data set, the bone mineral density data set, and we try to classify fracture according to age and BMD variables using uh, k equals 3, so using the three closest neighbors to classify, this would be the classification area. And it might look a bit uh, strange uh, the way it's represented here, but don't forget that age and BMD are actually in different uh, scales. So if I'm going to look at distances to find the neighbors, I have to standardize these two variables so they are in the same scale. And this would be uh, how it would look, the, the classification um, area, um, with age and BMD standardized to the same scale. So the KNN with three neighbors in this case would give me a, an error rate of uh, 12%. So I would have these uh, 20 misclassified fractures out of the 169. And this is pretty much the idea of the K nearest neighborhood. I'm now going to spend the next minutes talking about the comparison of the different classifiers that we've seen so far. So I'm going to use the same example, age and bone mineral density to predict fracture. And with linear regression, we've seen that the boundary was given by this line here. So uh, anything in this area would be classified as non-fracture and below this line would be uh, uh, classified as fracture. And we obtain an error rate of 15%. We've done this, this, the same exercise for linear discriminant analysis. Uh, I still have uh, a linear boundary, but uh, slightly different. If you recall, the linear discriminant analysis is trying to uh, find the, um, the direction that maximizes separation between the two groups while minimizing the variance uh, of the uh, within groups um, on the projection to a, a lower dimension space. Uh, and the error rate for the uh, linear discriminant analysis was uh, identical to the logistic regression. We've seen also the quadratic discriminant analysis uh, where the boundary is a bit more flexible and it does not need to be linear. Uh, uh, but again, the error rate was uh, identical. And we've seen now the K nearest neighbors with three uh, neighbors to classify. And I have a, a smaller error rate of 12%. Um, and as you can see, the, the, the boundary is quite nonlinear. In any case, don't forget that this um, error rates are classified are computed in the same data that we use to fit the models. We'll see later other other ways of uh, computing this error rate that will give us a more realistic uh, error rate of the method.
So we'll now explore different settings to see uh, how the, the classifiers uh, perform in those settings. So in this first setting, I have two uh, predictors, x1 and x2, that are normally distributed and are not correlated. Here on the left side, we have a box plot representing uh, the error rate of different simulated data sets based on this assumption. Okay, so with the k nearest neighborhood with one neighbor, uh, this is going to give us the higher, highest error rate, just because despite the fact that the, uh, the k nearest neighborhood will be performing well in the um, observed data, will lack some uh, some generalizability to uh, new observations. Okay, the second method is again the k nearest neighbor, but using cross validation that we haven't seen yet, but we'll see in the next uh, in the next module. Cross validation to determine what is the optimal number of neighbors. Okay, so you can think about this uh, this second method as being the case nearest neighbor with the optimal number of uh, uh, of neighbors. Not surprisingly, the linear discriminant analysis is the one that performs um, best in this setting, exactly because we are in the setting where uh, the the distribution of the covariates or the predictors meet the assumption of the uh, linear discriminant analysis. In any case, the performance is very similar to the logistic regression. And finally, the quadratic discriminant analysis, which has a slightly worse performance because it's not requiring that the, the various variance uh, within each group is the same. So we lose a little bit of efficiency uh, by uh, not using that information. So this was the first setting. In the second setting now, uh, we have a similar situation, but now we have a correlation of 0.5 within each group, a correlation uh, uh, among x1 and x2 of 0.5 within each group. Okay, So this is still a setting that uh, benefits the linear discriminant analysis because this meets the assumptions uh, of the, the LDA, but the performance is very similar to logistic once again um, and the quadratic discriminant analysis slightly worse and slightly worse also the um, k nearest neighborhood uh, methods uh, and the idea here is that is that i have a highly structured data uh, and the linear discriminant analysis the logistic and the, even the kda quadratic discriminant analysis is making use of this structure of the data where the the k nearest neighborhood that is more flexible um, it ends up not being very efficient in this case. So the third setting, it's uh, very similar to the first one, so there's no correlation, but now that x1 and x2 are not really normally distributed, they have a t distribution, so basically they're going to have uh, some higher or uh, heavier tails uh, than the normal distribution. And in this case, the linear discriminant uh, analysis is going to perform slightly worse than the logistic because again the assumption on the LDA is that the x1 and x2 are normally distributed and the t distribution violates uh, this assumption. Uh, the quadratic discriminant uh, analysis seems to be quite affected by this um, and once again bad performance of one neighbor but not that bad for uh, the optimal uh, number of neighbors for the KNN. So the final three uh, settings. Now I have X1 and X2 that are still normal, but they have uh, different uh, correlations, opposite correlations actually. 0.5 in this one, um, or minus 0.5 in this one, and 0.5 in this one. Okay, and not surprisingly now, the linear discriminant analysis it's going to uh, perform poorly basically be because it's assuming the covariance matrix for x1 and x2 is the same for each one of the groups which is not the case interestingly the logistic uh, regression also um, is not performing very well here and the quadratic discriminant analysis is one really that gains mostly in this setting mainly because it allows uh, uh, the the covariance matrix to be different for each one, if each group of or each category of the outcome, while assuming the normality uh, distribution 
within each category. The next setting is a setting where x1 and x2 are still normal, but now I have a quadratic um, uh, x1 and a quadratic x2, there's a typo here, and also an interaction, okay? So if I fit a, a logistic model, let's say, ignoring these quadratic effects and the interaction, uh, I'm basically fitting the wrong model, so it's not surprisingly that uh, the error rate is much higher for logistic. And the same thing is going to be uh, uh, going to happen for linear discriminant analysis that also assumes uh, linearity. Uh, the quadratic discriminant analysis will benefit in this setting because it allows exactly a nonlinear border for the, the the classification in the classification space, and we have some some non-linearity happening, so it's not also surprising that the k nearest neighbor will perform well in this setting. And finally, a setting where I have a complex non-linearity, uh, and in this situation, the k nearest neighbor, which has which is the most flexible method, will really have the best performance compared to uh, linear discriminant analysis, logistic, and quadratic discriminant analysis. That assume less complexity in the model. So as you can see, there's really not one good method for all situations. Some situations uh, are more favorable to a specific methodology, and that's the reason why we, we study all these, these methods. But we could say that the logistic regression actually among uh, the, the these, these five methods that we've seen here, and according to these settings that we've created, um, ends up performing reasonably well in several settings.